Well, effectively, it's still March 1st. It is 22 hours and 30 minutes into the day. So we're in the uh, waning hours, or the, wee, uh, uh, the waning hours of uh, oh, of Monday. Uh, quickly heading over to uh, well, the second of March. It is, I, I, I think it has to do with a lot with the disconnect from history, and again, this goes into noses. Noses requires. A level of thought, a level of reading, a lot, a level of connection that stands outside the majority of people. It just it, it, it stands outside the average person. This is what Notes is about: is going above and beyond. Now, the direction it takes you is in a variety of different ways. It's not just one direction, uh, other than generally outside the mainstream of society. In other words, you're going outside the common thought, the common view. to see what more is out there. And the common view is the sense of status, the sense of self. And it's always about this certification. And I was uh, sort of joking with my dad and a number of things going on today that sort of sort of highlighted this, that the number of people on both the left and the right who, who rely on this thing called certified. And a lot of people were talking about the uh, the... the what's going on with the vaccines and the whole issue with chronic gas. And as I said before, I explained, use chronic gas, it may be a joke because it's a great fart panic of 2020 uh, or 2019. Uh, chronic gas is a serious, it is in itself can be a serious issue depending if you're a person who has something like that. And I do have issues, not necessarily with chronic gas, but uh, the uh, neurological, disorder, neurological disorder I have does cause problems with uh, the gas within the system, and it can be an issue, and so and quite a serious issue. Uh, for others, there's a lot of the reasons why people are incontinent and have to wear adult diapers uh, is because of a gas. It's a gas control issue that pushes things out when it shouldn't be pushed out. Uh, in terms of uh, children and babies, uh, when they have dysentery, and that's the chronic diarrhea, uh, well, what pushes out the uh, what pushes out the diarrhea is uh, again chronic gas. It's a gas issue, and in that issue, what happens is in the gas issue, as the push occurs, it pushes out all the liquids with it, and, the, and, and particularly children will end up dying of dehydration. So, because they won't have enough liquids in their body, sort of to maintain the, the system functions, and bit by bit, they're sort of they end up uh, being dehydrated, and then they and, and they end up dying of that dehydration. So, these things, chronic gas, and you know, along with this diarrhea, can kill a person. It's not. It is. It can be under certain conditions lethal, but for most people, it's simply it, it's it's an embarrassment. It's it's sort of a it's a, d a thing of discomfort. Uh, but this happens a lot with sex, <laughs> and this is why it can be used in a satirical sense, is that while there is a serious issue behind it, the ability to control it is, is well within our control, uh, and it doesn't cause, to a certain degree, the level of panic that we're seeing now. And the thing is, is that, and I guess it's both sides. There are two sides to the issue, and both sides are screaming at each other without necessarily making any sense because ni neither of them know what's actually going on. Neither of them have sat down, and what they'll do is they'll pull up an article, that, and they'll, they'll read different newspapers, different magazines, different uh, blog posts. And so they'll pull up one called Certified uh, by a certified nurse's assistant. Oh yes, they know because they're 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 a medical person. They're a certified uh, uh, nurses assistant. They're a certified uh, physician's assistant, and they have all these certifications. Well, there's an old show uh, from the 1930s. It's not no, it wasn't a TV show. It's that these shortened movie reels. And I talked to my see my dad was alive. 
near the end of nineteen near the end of the nineteen thirties. This is before television came out. And what was happening is that if you wanted to go to uh, entertainment, you wanted to go to entertain yourself. So if you didn't have radio, because radio was the way you would sort of get your entertainment. And today it's called the scribe video. Back then it was called radio. Uh, you would go to a movie theater. You'd pay like five cents to get in or whatever. Uh, and it wasn't cheap. It was five cents. And they'd have a number of these short movie reels. Half hour of this. And, you know, this is where Tom and Jerry came from. This is where Bugs Bunny, Looney Tunes. And it was a sort of a cheap person's uh, vaudeville. Uh, and then the theaters were so bad that literally caught the spit box. And <laughs> that's how bad it was. Uh, in terms, but the thing is, that if and this is what my dad did is as a kid, he was just sort of with my uncle, my uncle George, who was his brother at the time. You know that they had more children, but at that time, with, in terms of being around, he hung out, he hung, with, hung out with his brother George. They sort of were a pair, and did go out find uh, empty Coke bottles or whatever. Uh, return them, get the money back for the bottles, and then use the money they were from the bottles they collected, and, and they brought them to recycling because uh, the war effort was still on. They had that's when you had the recycling. Uh, again, recycling is not a new thing; it's it's something that was brought back again. And they'd go to the movies. They'd spend the afternoon and the, and, and, and the afternoon watching a variety of different movies and short reels: Three Stooges, uh, Bugs Bunny. The you watch Sambo. Sambo was one of the one of the cartoons that they used to watch. And people say, "Well, Sambo's racist." Well, Sambo, and this is the way it was with, with Tom and Jerry. The person who was at the bottom, the underdog, was often the hero. And so Sambo wasn't being portrayed as an idiot. He was the hero. And so you'd have all the, the in this theater these kids. Cheering on Sambo as he was outdoing whoever was whoever was the villain that was that, that was going after Sambo. But again, this is completely understood, misunderstood. It's taken out of context, and these people who have their own sense of self will get up there, or they're on their own thing, and they will expect everyone to follow what they're doing. This is sort of the same thing. Now, this is what we talk about the, the, the certified nurses. Well, three Stooges, well, they were certified morons. <laughs> They had their own union, and the thing is that during the Three Stooges, that it, when the Three Stooges were filmed, you could be classified as a moron and and have everything you have confiscated, and you couldn't write checks. They'd take everything from you. Women were in, it were a classification of moron. They called feeble-minded. This is why women couldn't have their own check. Women couldn't have their own checking accounts. They couldn't sign a check. They couldn't sign a contract because they were feebly minded. They were they were a sort of high functioning moron. My grandmother su suffered the th same thing. My grandfather died uh, when uh, uh, my mom was a little girl, and she had a hard time renewing her mortgages because she needed a man to uh, to, to help her sign. She couldn't sign on her own because here is a woman who's taking care of all these kids, taking care of the house. Get, has a job to bring the money home to pay for everything, but no, sorry, you're not you're not a man. You need a man to sign for you. This is the way it was. The in, the injustices and indignities were all over. It wasn't restricted to simply one group or one race. It was continuous throughout. So a lot of people were saying systematic. Yes, systematic. Go back and watch uh, the TV show. Uh, uh, from from the 1980s, uh, a BBC production called Yes Minister. You understand what's going on in terms of the politics. You understand why this injustice sort of is there, and what happens is is that these groups fight back and forth, and then they just simply they, they, they create the narrative for the government to step in and do something. The government doesn't do that because the government is the one who caused the problem in the first place. People don't, they don't seem to understand that the government, in turn, either right or left, sits in there and plays the other side, right and left, uh, against each other. They create the conflict. And then they come up with a solution for the conflict. More government. More security. And this is completely missed. Completely missed. And this, again, is all about status. Who has what status and where?
Well, it is about uh, 13 hours and 41 minutes into the second day of March, I think. And we do have a package opening. That's what we're here for. So let's get to it. So the packages aren't necessarily anything spectacular. <laughs> I mean, I like I like I like what I get, but uh, I'm pretty sure there are other people who have other uh, other ideas, other views and per views and sort of. Uh, what was I looking for now? <clears throat> Camera moves, knock that over. There's always a bit of technical issues. Let's see if we can open the other end. The issue here is the tape, and that's what seems to be sort of blocking the opening. I had something here a while ago that could have, the last time, I, but I don't know where it went, that could have opened it, but it uh, doesn't this seem to be here right now. So it's uh, probably some other means of getting this open and getting this off. There's always more than one way of doing things. And that seems to be the case. We do have it off now. And what do we have here? Ah, uh, okay. My dad has a, a vision impairment, and backing out of spaces and into other places and stuff like that are very, very difficult. So, um, one of the things he liked, but it's kind of expensive in a BMW, because uh, one of the people who drive him to church has a BMW, they have a camera where they can sort of see backwards and forwards, there's a proximity sensor, so I got my dad this. We're going to install it, try it out. This is the uh, black box for uh, uh, for the car. It's got uh, a forward-facing camera and a rear-facing camera, including night vision. It's high quality. So, um, it will be interesting to see how this actually installs and how it works. Uh, if it helps him out, then that's great because... Um, It'll keep him uh, more comfortable driving uh, in 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 in, in uh, uh, for a longer time. Anyways, I hope that's it for the package opening today. My mind is still off, so if you have excused that, and I'll see you probably in a couple hours. There's the bus. Well, it is 22 hours and uh, 38 minutes into the second day of March. It's Tuesday, uh, March 2nd. Sec second? Oh. Uh, 2021. It is a sad thing to watch the United States and also Canada and most of the West destroy itself. But that's where we're going. That's where the United States is going. Well, and I said, I often use the we in a very generic sense of the term since I'm here. I am actually Pan Asian. I live a Pan Asian lifestyle. Uh, I live in a Pan Asian community. And most of my life is or oriented in the Pan Asian sphere. Uh, I have very little to do with the West anymore. So, but I use it in a uh, sort of a uh, uh, in a figurative manner, if people understand that. There's so many people who just don't understand what's going on, 
can't be bothered to look things up. Assume that they know what they know is the absolute truth. We'll never question it. We'll never seek to uh, uh, challenge themselves on their own ideas. And yet at the same time, they consider that somebody else's ideas to be completely wrong. And, uh, well, it seems you have a lot of assumptions, and so I'm not talking to you anymore. Okay. <laughs> you know? And the thing is, is I wasn't the one who initiated the con. I wasn't the one who initiated the conversation. They did. And when I brought out some of the points, I said, well, these are a lot of assumptions. It wasn't points. These are things I've experienced, things I've observed. Uh, and I could easily point out where they were in terms of on the internet and so on and so forth. But uh, they continued along with their lines of the assumptions. And, and said, well, this is the way you are. I'm not talking to you anymore. Have a good day. <laughs> it's okay. Doesn't bother me. Uh, you know, you help people out. You try to be helpful to them. And they turn around and they bite you. They bark at you. You walk away to leave them alone. I mean, the thing, the thing is, is that the, the guy who freaked out on Saturday in a Chinese restaurant... He was one customer there. Everyone else was fine. And this was one guy. Uh, he wanted me to stay away, with him, away from him. I stayed away from him. Uh, I tried to keep not saying anything so I didn't sort of, you know, spread the germs around if the other way he wants it. But the more I kept quiet, the angrier he got. It wasn't about me not wearing the mask. It was, I wasn't listening to what he was saying. It was his... Uh, he was forcing his views on me. And when I didn't reply or respond to it, he got very angry. It was a status issue. But a status issue don't work on me because I have... I, a status issue, a, a status attack, will work on someone who has status. If you don't have status and like, I have no self-esteem, then it's not going to work on me because I don't have status, I don't have self-esteem. Try somebody else who does, but I, I don't, so it doesn't necessarily matter. And it doesn't matter what you say to the person because the, the argument in terms of the, well, aren't you going to argue about this whole uh, chronic gas thing? I said, well, no. Because most people don't understand it. They don't understand what's going on. Don't you know about the various the different types of chronic gas there are? Yeah. What about it? <laughs> and then they go, oh... They get, they go, they go nuts. Because this is stuff I see on a regular basis. This is the stuff I work on in terms of research. I know what it is. Well, how long have we been doing this research? Well, I read this in a newspaper. I read this in, a, in an article on the internet. I read this, you know. And it's something they read. They didn't sit down and do the research. They didn't sit down, they don't understand the mechanism. They don't understand quantum mechanics. They don't understand quantum physics. They don't understand... Uh, organic chemistry. So how are they going to understand virology? Because virology is a subset of quantum mechanics and organic chemistry. If you don't understand this, you don't understand what I'm saying right now, that organic chemistry is a subset of uh, 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 virology is a subset of organic chemistry and quantum physics. If you don't understand this, then you don't understand the subject. And there's nothing to say. Because that's where the issue is. Same thing with the whole, you talk about people with climate change. Oh, don't you know about climate change? Yeah. He says, well, what? Nothing. <laughs> because, again, unless they understand atmospheric physics, they're not going to understand climate change. And more often than not, they're getting their articles, they're getting their information, they're doing their research in newspapers, magazines, uh, websites that are what are called popular science websites, people who are debunkers. And the more often than not, well, I went and did the background research on these debunkers. And background research is, isn't necessarily a night or a fun thing to do. It's very boring. I mean, I wanted people, you know, they, they, they would often talk, talk about, you know about the Jews, right? And they said, you know, I, 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 the, the, the whole world is controlled by Jews. I said, okay, well, maybe. I said, well, okay, maybe. I said, well, the best place to get my information from, from term, terms of what the Jews are and who they who they are is you go to rabbinical conferences. There's a lot of rabbinical conferences online. There's, there's a whole 
uh, area that you can find them in. You, can, you need to sit through the lect lectures one by one. You go through, you take your notes, and <laughs> you, that's it. That's as far as it goes. And as you get the experience within the rabbinical conference, you get to understand who these people are. Why they think the way they think, and the various different points of view that they have. You find that they're, they're not all on the same page. They don't all agree with each other. That They often, more often than not, the different shuls, the different, uh, the different yeshivas, are, are, are fighting with each other. They, they, they don't agree on anything. And so then they're going to go back and say, well, you show them this, and they go completely, they'll go, the, 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 you know, there's people who uh, read these websites, and they go go bonkers and say, well, this isn't true. You're, 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 you're just simply buying what they say. Well, I'm not buying what they say. I'm observe what they have. I, this is what one person said. This is another rabbi said this, and one, they, and you can see that there are differences. You can see that they fight back and forth. That's an it's an observation. It's not what they're telling me. It's what I see. That there aren't agreements on everything. There are agreements on some things, but there aren't agreements on everything. And there's enough of a difference that that just because one someone one Jew says something doesn't necessarily mean another Jew is going to agree with it. All you have to do is look at the, di the difference between uh, Reform, Conservative, and the Orthodox, uh, the, type, the, the categories of, 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 of Judaism. Right? The, these are the main categories of Judaism. Go into the or Orthodox. How many subgroups of Orthodox Jews are there? These people are not on the same page. They don't all agree with each other. They are different points of view. But yet, what happens is that when people simply do the research on the surface, they don't get into the long... Uh, it's going to take you a month to go through some of these rabbinical conferences, depending on how many lectures there are. Uh, it could take you a couple months or a couple of years to really get through everything before you have a sense of who these people are and, and why they think the way they think. And it's not necessarily an issue that, that, that they're all bad people. Uh, but yet what happens is that you'll have groups like, again, the left and the right, you have, again, all these subgroups who will generalize based on what they've read in the newspaper or in other articles like that. Uh, they don't do any background research. They don't do any checking. They don't do any vetting uh, in terms of their source checking. They stay very superficial in the research. Deep dive research is v done by very few people. And it's done by very few people because it takes a long time to do. It's not something quick. It's not something that's easy. And in terms of easy, in terms of being quick, you can't get you can't get it done in a week. You can only do it if you have enough experience. You can get a good. Uh, you can get a sufficient deep dive done within a week if you are an experienced researcher. If you are not an experienced researcher, typically used to doing a deep dive, then you cannot make any assumptions or have any sort of conclusions in terms of your observations because you don't have enough experience. It's not that people are stupid or anything, it's just they don't have enough experience. You haven't been doing this long enough to say, okay, this is what this probably is and, and have a good sense of that so that when you are further along, let's say six, seven months down the road, a large chunk of the longer data confirms with your shorter analysis. Again, this is what the this is what the epidemiologists, the data scientists lack. They missed it. They, they don't have the experience. And so they can come out and say something and no one really worries about it in terms of the upper people because they're out of the line of fire because they're they're putting in all these young people who will eventually be, you know, they'll be they'll be they'll be chopped off, uh, uh, thrown to the side and Thank you very much, and uh, have a nice day. <laughs> but this is what's happening in the United States, is, uh, and, and this is happening throughout much of Europe as well, and in Canada, is a sad thing because they're disappearing. They're on the path of self-destruction. And this isn't from me, this is from Dostoevsky. Go down and read Dostoevsky, read uh, Crime and Punishment, read uh, Brothers Karamazov. It's there. And this was written in the 1800s. Go look up H. Look up H. G. Wells. Look up who he is. Look at the School of London. See how the School of London is connected to H. G. Wells. I understand a lot of these people are working on fiction.
Anyways, uh, time for me to watch some TV. <laughs> I'm on my usual YouTube stroll.